Let's move on now because it's almost exactly a year since the Financial Stability Board, in close collaboration with the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructures, published a roadmap to enhance cross-border payments. The ambitious blueprint aims to enhance cross-border payments, bringing widespread benefits for citizens and economies across the world. After stock takes an analysis of existing systems and arrangements over the past year, work is underway to develop proposals to upgrade payment systems, processes and arrangements and to consider new types of arrangements. Well, Victoria Cleland is the Executive Director for Banking, Payments and Innovation at the Bank of England. She's the Deputy Chair of the CPMI Programme Coordination Board that oversees much of this important work. And I'm delighted to say that she now joins us live from the city of London. It's good to see you, Victoria. Just give us the broad view here. Why is enhancing cross-border payments so important? I think there are a number of different reasons for that. And I think if we just think about the value of cross-border payments, expectations are that by 2027, about $250 trillion annually are going to be sort of transferred cross-border. But what's really important about cross-border payments, it isn't just big businesses, it's not just the sort of the corporates it impacts, it's the general public and also really importantly um, remittance payments. I heard you talking earlier to um, Mark Gould from the Fed about financial inclusion. If we can improve cross-border payments, we will really be improving financial inclusion too. In the UK alone, about um, $10 billion of cross-border remittances took place a couple of years ago. I think that number is going up. So it's big numbers. It affects a lot of people. But despite the fact that's so important, there are a number of challenges to cross-border payments. Typically, compared to domestic payments, they're more expensive, they're slower, they're less transparent, and they're more difficult to access. So it's something that really needs to be solved. And it's a fairly long-standing issue. But the G20 last year, and you've just referred to the roadmap decided that actually it was something incredibly important. It did need to be addressed. And although I've talked about some of, the, sort of those big numbers and I've said they can be slower, occasionally um, you get some really scary numbers. So sometimes it can take 10 days to move a payment. That just doesn't work. So we want to improve that and make it better. So we know they're important, Victoria, but what is, what is being done to enhance these cross-border payments? So I think cross-border payments have been seen as an issue for many, many years. Um, but they're actually a sort of multifaceted issue. I've talked about the four different challenges. And there are lots of different issues underlay underlying that. And partly it's the payment systems, but also there are issues around data, anti-money laundering. So what we've been trying to do is to look much more holistically across the piece and so last year, as a G20 priority, there was a piece of work to understand, well, what are the challenges? Then the CPMI, Committee of Payment and Market Infrastructure, undertook some work. OK, these are the challenges and the frictions. What do we need to do to address those? And came up with 19 different building blocks. And then the roadmap that was published last autumn um, set out exactly how to address those with a number of different actions against each of these 19 building blocks. And there's a lot of work going on now to really take forward those actions. It's not enough just to set out a roadmap. We are working hard, CPMI working hard on them, Financial Stability Board, um, World Bank, IMF, PAPFA. So lots of public authorities are really trying to think, OK, how do we go about implementing the building blocks? But we certainly can't do it without the private sector. There's been a lot of work over the last year really trying to understand a bit more about the issues, doing fact-finding stock takes, but also some tech sprints to really try and come up with some innovative ideas as well. But now we're moving forward to, OK, this is our understanding. What does good look like? And a really important part of what does good look like is setting some targets. And earlier this year, the FSB had a consultation um, to say, what should the targets be so what do we think good looks like for speed, cost, transparency and access? And a report on that is going to be published imminently. I wondered if it was going to be ready in time for this interview, but it, it's not quite, but that's something to look out for. So this is really saying these are the targets. We're not just saying let's improve it. It's like these are the actions to improve it and this is what good looks like. So I think a partnership between public and private sector on this is going to be really, really important. 
Yeah, I mean, let, let's take that a little bit further, Victoria, because you've got the roadmap, we've got the building blocks, we've got the vision. So what should the industry participants be doing now to make it all happen? Because obviously it's a big journey, there's a lot to be done, yeah. but the beginning is where it really matters. That's right. And I think the sort of the two key things that industry um, could really helpfully be doing. One is to engage with the um, sort of policymakers and standard setters such as CPMI and FSB to really make sure that we're putting the right policies in place. And then also thinking about, OK, what does this mean for you as an institution? Are there any particular changes you might need to make to your processes, to your systems? Are you going to need your own sort of program? to plan around that. So I think, first of all, engage um, with us. There are a number of consultations. There's one coming out shortly about operating hours, which will have a big impact, for example, on central banks in opening our RTGS systems. But actually, if we went 24-7, for example, that would have a big impact on industry. So it's really encouraging industry to think, what does it mean to them? Feed in thoughts and ideas to help us shape the policy. And then it's moving on to think, what does that mean? For an individual business, its charging structures, how it organises um, opening hours and things. Well, we look forward to these imminent developments uh, shortly. But thank you very much for joining us on Cybos TV today. Victoria Clellan, Executive Director of Banking Payments and Innovation at the Bank of England.